الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد كتاب العلم الفصل الأول أن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغوا عني ولو آية وحدثوا أن بني إسرائيل ولا حرج ومن كذب علي متعمدا فليتبوأ مقعده من النار رواه البخاري Respected listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The book and the heading of this title that I have recited before you and the hadith is related to Kitabul Ilm, which means the book of knowledge. So, Ilm, seeking knowledge, is something which is compulsory upon the male Muslim and also the female. And when one seeks knowledge, the reward and merit that it bestows on its possessor is that it makes one noble and it makes, gives one honor and it gives one greatness. And also it polishes one's manners and one's habits. Even a person that is educated with worldly education. So people would know that this person may have some manners. He will be disciplined. What about one that learns the Sharia, the law set up by, set up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it takes one away from the deviant paths and it takes one towards hidayah, takes one out of the darkness towards light. Now Islam in itself it values every kind of knowledge as long as it does not go against the Islamic beliefs. So the knowledge that we're referring to here is the divine law, either the Quran revelation sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the hadith of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as I mentioned, seeking ilm is compulsory upon the Muslims that they must have knowledge at least of basic masail and zuling so they can live their life. And that is one of the lessons I think every Muslim must have learned for during lockdown. We need to have some basic Islamic knowledge. Usually we think we'll rely on the local Mawlana Nasab or the local Imams are with every issue that we have right up until Dua also. So we may have learned we need to really take some time out and seek some knowledge and learn at least basic things. So we can live our day-to-day -day life in accordance to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to do our ibadah complete, we need to have knowledge. And if we do not have no knowledge, then we could be doing it wrong. And there are so many masail related to ibadat, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first hadith, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anh narrated Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, transmit from me even if it's one verse, subhanallah. If we have knowledge of one verse, one ayah, one hadith, then the Prophet is saying, transmit, spread this unto others. There is a great misunderstanding, especially common amongst the youth. 
we think we are not practicing how can I transmit or how can I spread this to someone else. So that is a misunderstanding that we have. We know namaz is fard. We have to spread this message unto others. The question is, if we are praying ourselves or not, can we still invite others towards prayer? Yes, as long as we have the intention that I'm, I will pray. If one does not pray, then that is a separate sin in itself. But if one completely has no intention of praying and then he's encouraging others and saying, you pray, then of course he would be blamed. But if one has the intention that he will pray and do other ibadahs, but he could be some weakness in this, but yet he still encourages others, then he will be rewarded. So this is also a duty of a Muslim, not only to learn knowledge, but to spread it. And the more we know, the more responsible that we are. The scholars, they know more, they're responsible more to spread this knowledge. A layman knows basic things about Islam, so we have to spread this message to others, even if it's one hadith, even if it's one ayat of the Qur'an, anything that we know about Islam that will benefit another, we, we have to transmit, we have to remind them. وَحَدِّثُوا عَنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَلَا حَرَجْ The Prophet وسلم, said, and you may narrate from the Banu Israel there being no harm in that anything that is story related, as long as it's not to do with the divine sharia, and then the last part of the hadith, very important point for the Muslims, all the Muslims that they must be, that we must be careful. And but if anyone deliberately, deliberately forges a lie against me, then let him take his seat in hell. So if a person says something which is a hadith deliberately, and he has said this a hadith. And now what the Prophet ﷺ said that he has lied against the Prophet ﷺ. So what is the punishment for this? This person should be prepared to be in the fire of hell. So we have to be careful when we are spreading messages from WhatsApp group to group, not even reference checking if it is a hadith or if it's not and we're just spreading it onto others and there's all kind of surprising messages people send on whatsapp this some message where a person sends some message and says if you pass it on to a hundred people then you will get such and such reward and if you do not pass it then you know, you may die after 10 days and they send a picture of a dead body saying this person did not pass it on and look at him Subhanallah, all kind of surprising, astonishing messages that go on and all kinds, people putting it on their status and so on. We have to cross-reference and check first, is this a hadith? Is this what the Prophet ﷺ said? We have to be careful, otherwise we'll fall in the sin of lying. And it's enough for the person to lie if he just send something or say something that he hears without actually investigating into the matter. So we should not take the hadith of the Prophet wasallam lightly. It's been preserved with chains. There's just whole books on Asma Rijal, names of the muhaddisin and how the hadith is all chained. So so much effort is being made and it links back all to Back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and if one fabricates something, now the billahi min zalik. May Allah save us all and protect us. And Sabura ibn Jundub wa al Mukhira ibn Shu'ba radiyallahu anhu ma qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam man haddatha anni bi hadith yura anhu kathib fahuwa ahad al kathibin rawahu Muslim. Sayyidina Samura ibn Jundub radiyallahu anhu and Sayyidina al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba radiyallahu anhu narrated Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who narrates a hadith from me which he thinks is false is amongst the liars. Something which is fabricated or one fabricates something and says it's a hadith. People unfortunately have done that. 
and they are fabricated and then lies. So in this another hadith which regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that he is amongst the liars. وَنَ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُوا إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثَةِ أَشْيَاءِ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةِ أَوْ عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهِ رواه مسلم. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when a person dies, the word for his deeds are cut off from him. So a person has passed away. In his lifetime, he could have performed Hajj, he could have performed Umrah, he could have given Sadaqah, charity, praying Salah, optional prayers, fasting, obligatory or optional fasts, so many worships that one could do. But when he has passed away, these amals are now cut off. He can no longer do them. But there are three things. That will continue and the reward will continue when one is in the grave. We can call it investment for the Akhirah. So while one is in the grave, he can't pray now, he can't keep fasts and so on. But there are three things that continue, the reward continues. Sadaqatin jariya, charity that is continued, continues charity where people are benefiting from. For example, a person uh, contributed towards a hospital and made a hospital where people are getting treatment. There was no, a place where people needed water and water is provided, a well or a water pump, so on. Until people are taking benefit from this sadaqah, he will be rewarded in the grave. But number two, which is related to the topic, our ilmin yuntafa'u be. Knowledge from which benefit is derived. A person may have read a book. is a musannif. And now thousands and millions of people have read this book. And they've benefited from this book. And they've learned something about their deen. About Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa This reward will continue in the grave. Or a person who's taught Qur'an or he's taught Hadith. Or anything related to deen. And he can have thousands of students. And these students, they continue to produce and to deliver about Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This person's reward will be continuing in the grave. Or waladin salihin yad'ula, number three, is righteous children who pray for him. Pious children is a big ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should always make dua to Allah. He gives us pious children. So being pious and for the children, if a person dies and he is passed away from the dunya and he has pious children, then he has achieved a lot. Because now that he has passed away, his amals are cut off, but these children will continue doing good deeds. They will pray and they will read salah and they will give sadaqah and charity. All the reward direct would go to the parents. So having pious children, or if a son is hafiz of the Qur'an, memorize the Qur'an, he has no choice to keep it in memory. He has to read it every day. So he will be reading Quran every day and the reward will go to the parents. Or any dini work that he will do, the reward will go to the parents. So such a, an achievement of having pious children. We should always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Children are amana. They're given to us by Allah. So we can't just direct them towards things that suit our own desires. Where a person thinks that I have a son, he's a money-making machine. I'll use him to work and do business and so on and pay the rest of my house off and do such and such thing. It's an amana from Allah. If we direct them towards deen 
and we pass away and they are practicing, then we can call ourselves lucky. The Prophet ﷺ said that such a person, that as pious children, they will make dua for him every day. And they will continue to benefit. And this hadith was recorded by Imam Muslim rahimahullah in his Sahih. So just like we invest for the dunya, we need to invest for the akhirah. By doing good deeds. So these were three hadiths, a uh, couple of hadiths that I recited from Kitabul Ilm. And inshallah from next week, as um, uh, on Friday, inshallah, we will start the topic of Kitabul Udhiyah. Kitabul Udhiyah is about the sa sacrificing an animal because as we're approaching um, towards uh, Eid al Adha, not, there's still some time left, but the topic of Udhiyah, sacrificing an animal and those masail that are related to the sacrifice, inshallah, will be discussed from next week. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us all and he preserves us from error and strain. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us all submissive slaves. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And finally, just a reminder, inshallah, Today at nine o'clock, the question and answer session will also take place. So brothers and sisters are um, requested um, that they can also listen to that. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.